He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil will be allowed to befall you, nor plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my son. Hey, welcome to the afternoon service. My name is Brent and I'm representing the Good News Aces. Now, whether it be in this service or any other occasion, the Good News Aces aim to operate to the best of our abilities in order to execute the mission effectively and intentionally. Now, what is the mission? Our mission is to go ahead and to make sure that we intentionally celebrate Christ for all to believe. And in this service, well, it's our prayer that you find power and peace in the Lord Jesus Christ and none other. Now with that being said, I'm going, uh, let me go ahead and invite each and every one of you to go ahead and just stand up and let's go ahead and start worshiping God. Amen. Yes, so it's the last day of February, um, what they call the love month. But we are we know for sure that the love of our Lord is so unending, so overwhelming that we can never, we can't stop singing about His love. Amen?
reckless even to come and just die on that cross just to save us. How amazing. Let's just go on and sing about this love.
with your love we know that we are in you we are alive in you that we bring life to everything everyone that is around us lord lord we thank you we just continue to bask in this in this love to just be covered by your love by your grace lord lord we thank you we know that you are with us your presence is here with us today lord lord we just we just continue to just soak in this love lord lord we thank you in jesus mighty name chapter 11 beginning at verse 23 for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me dear Heavenly Father we thank you for Jesus and we thank you so much Jesus that you gave nothing less than your body for the for the salvation of our sins and for our healing and for our restoration. And so now, so now, Lord Jesus Christ, for everyone here and for everyone online, as we remember the broken body and as we eat of the bread, uh, we are hopeful and thankful for the healing and restoration and the peace that you give each and every one of us. It all started when you gave it all for us first. Thank you, Jesus. And so receive today, O oh Lord. I mean, receive today. My uh, let's let's receive healing and let's receive restoration. Let's go ahead and eat. it says in the same way also he took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes thank you O Lord God once again for Jesus Christ and thank you Jesus that you didn't just commit to us with a ring with chocolates and flowers no Jesus, you went as far as shedding your own blood in order to say that you wanted to be with us, not just for a season, not till death to us part, but beyond and forever. 
your blood secured our righteousness and it's not our works and it's not by our works that we call ourselves righteous but it's by your blood that we are thankful that you have made us righteous and it is with a righteous heart that we say thank you Jesus that we will be that you will be with us faithful to us and we will always be with you never leaving us never forsaking us thank you Jesus for your blood in Jesus name we pray amen let's go ahead and drink Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For anything else, folks, I just want to say good afternoon to each and every one of you. Hello, Pastor Popo. Hello, Tita Macri. I missed you. And it's good to see you guys again. It's good to see all of you guys again. Oh, also you. Yes, Bunjo. I miss you very much. Uh, virtual hug. And... Uh, to all of you guys watching online, thank you so much as well. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's a slow afternoon this afternoon as we end this month of February, but I thank you nonetheless for being with each and every one of us. We are continuing down and we are concluding our series for this month, which is Love as Christ Loves. For the first three, was it three? Probably three, I can't remember. But for the first Sundays, for the... For the former Sundays of this month of February, we have been talking about how we love the church as Christ loves. We also talked about how we love as Christ loves in marriage. We also talked about how we love as Christ loved in family, in our families. We love our families as Christ has loved us. And Kuya John was good enough to go ahead and uh, share his heart on that topic for each and every one of us. Today, I think it is a good and fitting word for us to go ahead and talk about how we love our neighbors as Christ loves each and every one of us. Today's message is entitled, Gone and Done. But I go ahead and start off with the parable of the Good Samaritan, which is at the Gospel of Luke, starting at chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. I'll go ahead and read it for each and every one of us. You're welcome to read it in your Bibles. Behold, the lawyer stood up to put him to the test. We're talking about Jesus. A lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, the lawyer answered, Of course, you shall love the Lord the, your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So, dinuktungan na yun, na yung dalawang sinasabi natin. And then Jesus replied, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. It doesn't stop there. But he, this is the lawyer, the lawyer desiring to justify himself, take note, he desiring to justify himself said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by, on the other side. They were chickens. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. This is the man who was beaten. Came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Now Jesus, going back to the lawyer, he asks, Which one of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? The lawyer responded, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. Let's pray. 
Dear Jesus, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this parable that you shared. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that has given us insight to look into this parable and to dig deeper into your love and to your grace. And we thank you so much, O Lord Jesus, for the huge revelation that is for each and every one of us today, myself included. We receive it now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, guys, alam, alam ko pwede natin pag-usapan yung ginawa ng Good Samaritan eh. Pero for a moment, I want you guys to put yourselves dito po sa sapatos nitong lawyer na to. Put yourselves in the shoes of the lawyer. The lawyer was essentially asking Jesus two things. Ano po yung dalawang tinanong niya? Sinabi niya, well, he sinabi na, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Tapos follow-up question, who is my neighbor? Pero take note of what the attitude was prior to yung tanong niya. Kasi dun po sa una, so verse 25, nakasulat po dun, ang sabi ng lawyer, ay, ang, ang sinabi ni Luke di, about the lawyer, he was saying he wanted to put Jesus to the test. That's why he asked, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And number two, he wanted to justify himself. Kaya niya tinanong, who is my neighbor? So take note of that. He wanted to test Jesus and he wanted to justify himself. Okay? Now that sounds a little bit like us when we were be, when we didn't believe before we were saved guys I remember myself I didn't really care much about God I didn't really care much about religion I I didn't think God was great that I would go ahead and put him to the test I was questioning God's greatness and number 2 it's not that I would go ahead and ask who is my neighbor but back in the day before I was saved I thought I was pretty good already, that I, was, I, I wanted to justify myself. I, th I thought that I was good. That the, itong kalagayan nitong lawyer na to describes precisely how we were before the Lord Jesus Christ came into our lives and saved us. We were questioning the greatness of God, number one. And number two, believe na believe po tayo sa sarili nating righteousness. Believe na believe po tayo sa sarili nating goodness. Are you with me so far? We questioned God's greatness and we asserted our goodness. Now, let's go ahead and go a little bit further about how the Lord Jesus Christ responded to each of these questions. But before anything else, I want to just go ahead and point out that before, during, and after the giving of the law, back in, ito ah, tanong ko lang po, sino sa inyo dito yung mga nagbo-Bible quiz? Siyempre, alam nyo na naman, di ba? I mean, kapag tinanong ko, anong John 3.16? For God's will of the world, blah, blah, blah. Alam nyo na na yun, di ba? But, like if you go down further and yung mga top scoring nitong mga Bible quiz na to, they are able to go ahead and point out san po ang Ten Commandments. Exodus 20! Yeah! One point. Right? But here's the thing. I want to point this out. There is a verse. There is something that the Israelites said before and after Exodus 20. Exodus 19 and, and Exodus 24. Go ahead and look it up. Ang sabi po nila was, all that the Lord says, we will do. They were believing in their own righteousness. That they would go ahead, before, before the law even came out their mouths, before they had any idea of the law that was going to be shared to them, they were already telling God, Lord, kaya natin yan. Kaya ko yan. I can do it. And then they went ahead and heard everything from the Ten Commandments down to the 613 laws. And then they would still go ahead and say, Lord, kaya ko yan. Let's do this. Perfect example of how we were as well. We may not have, have had the law. But the, can't you remember, there, there were those times na believe na believe tayo sa sarili natin. Bago dumating ang GGSS sa buhay natin, believe na believe na po tayo sa sarili natin. We don't say it, and we try to be humble about it, but in the words that we say behind our computer screens, instead of in front of a person, guys, believe na believe tayo sa sarili natin. And even up until now, even after we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, it is still something that we struggle with, Yes? Ako, believe na believe ako sa sarili ko kuminsan. I like to hear myself talk, which is why I kind of over-talk to you guys. Thank you, by the way, for continuing to listen. You know? But here's the thing. Before, after, and during the giving of the law, the people of Israel were hard-hearted in saying, all that you say, we will do. And over the course of generations after Mount Sinai, the people of Israel presumed to pull the law down. Because here's the thing. Sinabi nilang kaya nila. Pero over the course of time, you see it. 
in the rest of the Old Testament, they tried to they tried to follow the law. And they came to a point that they went ahead and thought na parang, wait, maybe baka pwede nating pakusapan yan, Lord. May mga ibang laws na pwede nating, you know, let's, let's try to be nice about it. And to be honest with you, guys, God was really gracious to them and, and they didn't, He didn't really tell them na parang, okay, no, no, we have to up- uphold the law. Through the course of history, God was gracious to them and made sure that they did not fall into total destruction. But instead, He saw as the Israelites Israelites tried to follow the law the best they can and failed every time until the point that they came became so tired of the law that in the fullness of time here comes Jesus Christ and I believe that one of the ministries of the Lord Jesus Christ besides his ultimate mission of laying down his life for each and every one of us was to first put things into perspective what do I mean by this well in the Sermon of the Mount I believe I mean like back in the day po nung nasa SLU po ako um, they they tried so hard Ano po yung mga classes natin sa religion nun? The way of Christ, the way to Christ, Christ the way, and leading the way in Christ. Diba? Louisians? Anyone? Anyway, <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> they tried to point out the Beatitudes were, were like extra things for us to follow. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the world and the land, and so on and so forth. And, you know, we, we tried to think of it as, wow, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and follow the Beatitudes. But on, well, here's the thing. And this is another thing that you may all want to consider. Hindi po sa hindi po sinasabi ni Jesus yan para dagdagan kung ano yung mga sundin natin. Pero he was putting the law back in its place. Kasi po right after lahat ng mga sinabi niyang yan, ano yung sinabi niya? Okay, sinasabi niyo sa law na parang bawal na bawal it's it's wrong for us to commit adultery. But I tell you now, you look at a girl and say, "Hey, what's up?" You're already consider you're already doing adultery, man. And it may, maybe, it, it, I mean, you may not have personally killed the person. This is Jesus still talking. At ginagatungan niya talaga tong law. He was saying that parang if you look at a person, be like, you've already killed that person. You've already broken the law. So instead of saying all of these things to add to the law, no, he put the law back in its place where it is impossible for us to go ahead and reach it. Are you guys with me so far? He was doing the same thing here. With the lawyer, Jesus Christ was pointing it out with the lawyer here. Because the lawyer was asking, what shall I do to inherit in her eternal life? Binalik niya. And you know, he could, have went ahead and, he could have went ahead and said that whole thing about the Sermon of the Mount. Pero, alam naman niyang lawyer to, kaya tinanong na lang niya, oh, ikaw, alam mo naman yung law eh. Oh, what, 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 what's your interpre- interpretation of the law? Ito na. Ulit, ulitin natin. Diba? Ano, yung, ano yung nakasulat dito? You shall love the law, Lord. Love the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Take note, yung lawyer nagsabi na ito, ah. So he knows that you should love the Lord your God with all. All. Not some. Not 90%. Not 65%. But 110%. Ano yung, ano yung 10%? Because you love your neighbor also as you love yourself. See that? So you're busy loving God, but you're also trying to love yourself and your neighbor. Isn't that fun? At ano yung sinabi ni Lord Jesus? You have answered correctly. Do this and you live. Let's keep going here. How many more minutes do I have? Thank you. <laughs> so that's the law, guys. That was the totality of the law, and we know that. The point of the Lord Jesus Christ here was saying that he was saying, do the law. Do this and you shall live. Moving on. Ano yung pangalawang tanong ng lawyer? Well, who is my neighbor? So, he, and he was seeking, seeking to justify himself. He tells him a parable, essentially one of extreme mercy. Take note, guys, I want you to put yourselves... Let, let's take away everything. Let's try to pretend that we can do it, but I know we can't do it because Christ in, is in us and He loves us so much and we're so high about that love. But try to imagine for a moment. Try to imagine that you guys don't have that love in your lives for now and try to imagine that you're asked to go ahead and not just help someone, but you have to stop whatever you're doing. You have to step out of your comfort zone and you have to go to someone who you hate, who you hate, as in you've been taught to hate this person ever since you were born. 
You, he, this person is your sworn enemy and you've seen him beaten and dragged in the road and left for dead. Try to imagine in your, non, your, your, your pretend non-Christian hearts for a moment, you were asked to help this person and not only help this person, that you were supposed to cover his wounds and make sure that he was feeling better and that not only do you help him on his feet, no man, you carry him. You carry him over and you bring him to a hotel or something or a, or a high-class hospital, St. Luke's. And not only were you asked, not only were you expected to go ahead and pay for this guy's hospital bills for the days that he, you've been taking care of him, but as long as he stays there, even though he abuses it, even though he stays there and overstays there and asks for filet mignon and lobster and, and all sorts of things, even though he's not supposed to be eating those things, you're going to go back there and you're going to pay for everything. That this is that was the answer of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was presenting the law as impossible. And he was also presenting mercy. Mercy and extreme mercy as impossible. Are you with me so far? So what was Christ saying? Christ responded to the lawyer's immediate questions, ultimately by telling him, "Do the law and go show mercy." What should I do to inherit eternal life? You have to do the law. Who is my neighbor? It doesn't matter. But you be a neighbor to everyone, and I mean everyone, including your enemy, and show them not just small mercy, like sending thoughts and prayers, but no. Give him like full-on 100% mercy down to the point that you lose everything, but he gains everything. You guys with me so far? Can you do that? Can we do that? Praise God, because that's the thing. I asked you guys to pretend. I asked you guys to pretend. But here's the thing. We have something so much greater now because here, bef before, this, before Christ ever did anything else, that was the topic. That's what Jesus Christ was doing. He was saying that you can't do it on your own. You question my greatness. I am great. Well, no. Well, if someone, if Jesus said that. I didn't say that. You're not, gr you're not great. Jesus is great. And you're not good. Jesus is good. Amen. <laughs> the law came through Moses. And grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is truth. That Christ came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And he said that. He was the one, guys, we were told to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our minds, and all our souls, and all our strength, right? No, but here's the thing. He was the one who loved God with all of his heart, and with all of his soul, and with all of his strength, and in, uh, with all of his mind, by loving us. God, are you with me so far? He is honoring God. He shows God his love. Christ showed, God showed, Christ showed his love for God. By showing his love for us. So let me say that again. He loved God with all his heart. He loved God with all his soul and all his strength and all his mind by loving us with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength and with all his mind. Through sin, the thieves. Does this not sound familiar? Because let's go back. Let's go back. It says here that the man was going from Jerusalem. And he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat, it, beat, beat, it, and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. So they stole from him, they destroyed him, and they destroyed his reputation, they destroyed his business, and they left him for dead. Does that not sound familiar, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy? And that's precisely what happened at the garden when sin stripped us and when sin killed us, and when sin destroyed us. Are you with me so far? Because when we keep going down the line here, this is grace. Truth, okay, let's go back. Grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth is Christ came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. How do we know that he fulfilled it? When he loved the Lord our God by loving us. Are you with me so far? That's truth. Now, that's truth, but this is grace. This is grace. Grace is while we were his enemies, 
grace and Christ Himself, He had mercy on us. He stepped out of His comfort to help us. He could have, he could have gone His way and did what the priests and the Levites were doing, just walk on by. Why did the chicken cross the road? To avoid the... the, the, the sorry. Yeah? But he did not become a chicken. Christ was not chicken in the sense that he crossed the road, man. And then he went to this guy. He, he left his comfort zone. He healed the wounds of our past. He carries us in the present. And he pays for our future. Guys, he did not just pay for our, our time in St. Luke's with him. But he will also come back and continue to pay. And pay everything that, that, that we all the expenses, all expenses paid. So you see that, listen, I mean, this is, and it's no, it's no accident that the Christ had to point out that this was a good Samaritan. Priest was expected to do this, but he couldn't because when he touches blood, he would be unclean. A Levite was expected to do this, but same thing. He was by birth a holy person, but he would lose that holiness by touching something that was robbed and beaten. Not so the Lord Jesus Christ. Not so the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ paid for our future. And when he returns, he shall pay even more. So we ask ourselves, is Christ great? Is God great? And is God good? Because that's the dilemma. I mean, I've heard a lot of atheists talk about that. If God is so great, then how does he allow people to die? And if God is so good, how does he allow people to die? Here's the thing. Jesus proved his greatness and Jesus proved his goodness by himself laying his life down. And at the resurrection, he showed his goodness. At the cross, Christ showed his greatness and his power over death. And at his resurrection, he showed his goodness that he would not leave us alone. Body and blood. Cross and resurrection. Greatness and goodness, grace and truth. It all comes together, guys. And it's I just find it so fascinating. I can go ahead and keep talking about this. But here's the thing. We don't know how the lawyer responded. But by the power of the Spirit, after the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been so benefited to go ahead and enjoy this love that the Lord God has for each and every one of us in that we are able to see with our own eyes without any blemish or without any scales in our eyes, how good and how great our God is. Jesus Christ has guaranteed that and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have seen it and we have responded. Micaiah saw that my mic was broken and she responded. <sighs> Christ is the Son of God who laid down His life for us and rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven. Christ is the perfect and everlasting love that casts out all fear. Christ himself is the love of God for all of us. Christ is the power and Christ is the peace that moves us to love one another in church. Christ is the power and peace that allows us to love our spouses in marriage. And Christ is the love of God for us, empowering us to love each other in our families. Beyond the money we have, and beyond the skills we show, and beyond the knowledge that we, scare, we share, even if we are so proud and we find so much comfort in all of these things that we have, blessings that come from the Lord Jesus Christ, these are not what shines out in us. It is the love of God through Christ and His finished work that is the primary power that explodes in us. And it is the love of the Lord Jesus Christ that is the primary peace that holds us together. Everything else from down to skill, down to will. All of that is secondary to the love of God that Christ has for each and every one of us. Let us never forget that even if we go ahead and try to struggle. And we, here's the thing, in this world, it'll be hard for us and it, was, it has never been easy for us to love. But we have the blueprint of the Lord Jesus Christ and we're not saying love exactly how He loved in the Gospels. But we know for a fact that this love is a set of words in a set of Gospels. But it is a love that is alive in each and every one of us. 
other people can go ahead and subscribe to a newsletter or some sort of written word and say that that's how you love. But my friends, I submit to you today that we do not just have a love that is in word, but is in life and living word. That He is literally alive in you. And He is the one who is able to love through you no matter what the circumstance. You are able to love your family. You are able to love your spouse. You are able to love your church. You are able to love your neighbor. But here's the thing. It's not even about you trying to figure out who your neighbor is. Because, because of the Lord God showing His love for each and every one of us, regardless of who we are. We, it's, it's not a question of who is my neighbor. But it's more like, who can I be a neighbor to today? Before we go ahead and start identifying who's a neighbor and who's not a neighbor, that's not the question. The question is, how was Christ a neighbor to? And we know how that, we know how that goes. He loved us with an everlasting and perfect love that saves us and restores us and is with us not just now, not just tomorrow, but forever until the end of time and beyond. And keeping faithful mission for us to go ahead and create, collaborate, and connect and curate the love of God through each and every celebration and every circumstance that we have. Guys, it's not us. Here's the thing. We can the way we're built, we can go out and go out into missions. That's beautiful. But I submit to you today that while we're going out there, don't forget that there are people around you who are looking at you and listening to you and you are influencing these people. Don't forget that they also have the opportunity. Questions. It says in, chap in, in 1 Peter, be ready to give a testimony when the time is right. So until that day, we celebrate the love of God. We celebrate the love of God through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work. And while we're celebrating, people will come near. And when people do come near, we are ready with our testimony. And as we testify, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And that's how we end this, guys. This is the love. This is the love that not only brought us back from the dead, but this is the love that gives us power to keep on going. Love in time of COVID. And Father, we praise and thank you so much. Thank you for your loving kindness and your goodness towards each and every one of us. Thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for the grace and truth that came to you, through you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you that we can go ahead and invest so much in you. And you have been so faithful to give us plenty returns. And so today, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, let us celebrate that love. Guide us and be with us, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, as we go ahead and develop our testimonies. That we will be ready for when people ask us, why are we smiling? Why are we, why are we so happy? I pray, and I pray and declare a good week towards each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we give the Lord a clap offering, please? Have you been blessed today? Have you been blessed today? Guys, you have been blessed. And all of you guys online, I want to say thank you. And anyone here, anyone online, if you've been blessed today, I, uh, I covet your comments. But if there's anything that you want to ask about, if there's anything you want prayer for, the aces are ready here and here to go ahead and help you out with prayer or with everything that we can, we can ever give. As Christ has helped us, so we are willing to help you guys. Now let me bless each and every one of us. Because of Christ and His finished work, you are blessed and you are kept. Because of the Christ and His finished work, you are held together. God's face shines upon each and every one of you with full approval. Because of Christ and His finished work, He is gracious to you. He lifts His countenance upon you and out of the overflowing abundance of His grace, He gives you not just peace, but shalom, wholeness of being, peace beyond understanding, and the power of God unto salvation.
In the name of Jesus, we declare all of these things. And all, all of you say, Amen. Come on. Hello. It is giving time, guys. So let me just remind you guys that you guys are already blessed with so much. And because of that and from that, you are able to bless as well. Um, with that being said, I just want to go ahead and uh, encourage all of us to just continue to give so that the message of God's grace would just continue to spread, um, not just in our community, but around the world. Now, that being said, um, if you are giving online, uh, we're going to be flashing a couple of uh, account numbers for you guys to facilitate your online transfers right here. And now, um, for those of you guys who are giving here in our physical service, um, as usual, let's go ahead and follow protocol. On your way out, there's going to be a box for you guys to go ahead and drop your envelopes. And with that being said, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Uh, thank you so much from the Good News Aces. We love you. Take care. Have a good week. Bye-bye.